Imagine the unthinkable, a plane crashing into the sea on a foggy, moonless night. That's the harrowing tale of Kenya Airways Flight 431. As the aircraft plummeted into the ocean, the controllers in Abidjan, a city alive with the hum of nighttime activity, were jolted into action. The crash siren, an ominous wail that pierced the tranquil night, was immediately activated. An alert was issued, a distress call to the Ivory Coast Air Force, the local fire and rescue service, airport officials and the French gendarmerie stationed at the airport. Like a well-oiled machine, the response was swift. French firemen, their faces etched with determination, arrived at the beach just a few hours after the crash. Helicopters, their rotors slicing through the still air and multiple aircraft were dispatched. Their mission clear, locate the crash site. But the night was not on their side. It was a darkness that was almost tangible, a cloak that obscured the ocean's surface. The fog, a ghostly presence, added another layer of difficulty to the search and rescue efforts. The strong currents in the area posed risks to diverse and rescue personnel, a deadly undercurrent that threatened to pull them under. The lack of a key near the runway forced rescue personnel to take a detour to the crash site, precious minutes ticking away. The aerial search, hampered by the inclement weather, had to be suspended. The late response of the rescuers, a consequence of the challenging conditions, led to a tragic outcome. Those who had initially survived the crash were lost to the unforgiving sea. According to survivors, the crash site was a scene of unimaginable horror. The air was filled with screams, a chilling chorus that echoed across the water. But as the hours ticked by, the screams slowly died out, replaced by an eerie silence. In the midst of the chaos and confusion, the battle against time and the elements had just begun. In the pitch black night, with visibility near zero, the search and rescue operation was like finding a needle in a haystack. Imagine the scene, a dark foggy night, the ocean churning with strong currents, a chilling siren echoing through the air, and the palpable dread hanging heavy over the rescuers. The location of the crash was far from convenient. The absence of a key near the runway meant rescue personnel had to take a longer route to reach the site. The weather too was a formidable adversary. The fog was so thick it was like trying to see through a white blanket and the darkness made it almost impossible to distinguish between sea and sky. The aerial search was suspended due to the inclement conditions, but on the ground and in the water, the rescue efforts continued. As they navigated the treacherous waters, the rescuers faced yet another challenge, the powerful currents that posed a significant risk to divers and other rescue personnel. But perhaps the most heart-wrenching aspect of this nightmarish scenario was the cries for help that echoed from the crash site. According to survivors, the screams were almost constant in the minutes following the crash. Samuel Agbe, a Nigerian survivor, described the sounds as horrific, the desperate pleas of those who had initially survived the crash. Another survivor, Francisca Gindobla Sambo, corroborated this, her testimony adding another layer of tragedy to this horrific event. But as the hours wore on, the screams began to fade. One by one, the voices fell silent, swallowed up by the roar of the ocean and the vast, unending night. The late response of the rescuers, due in part to the challenging conditions, meant that those who could have been saved weren't. The survivors were out there, invisible to the rescuers, their cries for help swallowed by the vastness of the sea. The race against time was on, but in this grim scenario, time seemed to be the one thing they didn't have. Just when all seemed lost, a strong odor of kerosene signaled the first glimmer of hope. In the pitch black of night, with fog blanketing the ocean, the initial signs of the crash site were not what you'd expect. No flashing lights, no debris visible above the water, but instead a distinct smell. It was the scent of kerosene, a telltale sign of the wreckage wafting through the air and detected by one of the pleasure boats. This marked a turning point in the search and rescue mission. The boat crew followed the scent, leading them to a harrowing sight. Amidst the vast expanse of the ocean, they found large quantities of debris. Almost simultaneously, they heard shouts for help. The first survivors of the devastating crash of Flight 431 had been found. At 20 minutes past midnight, the first survivor was pulled from the icy waters, followed swiftly by three more within the next 15 minutes. These brave souls, having endured the unimaginable, were quickly transported to a nearby quay for urgent medical attention. 
Their rescue was a testament to the relentless efforts of the search and rescue teams, a beacon of hope amidst the overwhelming despair. However, the night was not yet over. As the rescue operation continued, a tale of extraordinary resilience unfolded. A French passenger against all odds had managed to swim an incredible 1.2 miles to the shore. His journey, a gruelling battle against the elements, ended when he was finally found by authorities. His survival was nothing short of miraculous, a testament to the indomitable human spirit. This was the first sign of hope. The first survivors found, the first lives saved. Against the backdrop of the dark ocean and the wreckage of Flight 431, these moments of rescue shone brightly. They served as a reminder that even in the face of the most dire circumstances, there exists the potential for hope and survival. In the face of despair, the rescuers had found a beacon of hope. The relentless search and rescue operation continued until there was no chance of finding any more people. This was the grim pronouncement made after hours of tireless efforts to rescue survivors from the ill-fated Kenya Airways Flight 431. As the sun rose on the 31st of January, the rescue operation was officially called off. The stark reality of the tragedy began to set in. In the aftermath of the crash, a total of 12 survivors had been pulled from the wreckage. Unfortunately, two of these brave souls succumbed to their injuries in the hospital. Thus, out of the 179 people on board, only 10 survived. Each survivor's story was a testament to human resilience in the face of unimaginable adversity. The grim task of recovering the bodies of the victims began in earnest. Divers braved strong currents and murky waters to retrieve the bodies of those who had perished. The operation was fraught with danger and tragically a Kenyan diver lost his life in the process, adding another casualty to the already heavy toll. The crash of Flight 431 claimed 169 lives. Among the victims were passengers and crew from 33 different countries. Most were Nigerians with two crew members hailing from the Netherlands working for KLM. The nationality of one victim remains undetermined to this day. The survivors, on the other hand, represented a diverse mix of nationalities. Among them were three Nigerians, a Kenyan, a Gambian, an Indian, and a Rwandan. They were the fortunate few who had defied the odds, their survival a stark contrast to the overwhelming loss of life. The aftermath of the crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 was a sobering reminder of the fragility of life. It also underscored the immense courage and dedication of the rescue personnel who risk their lives in the hopes of saving others. In the end, out of the 179 souls on board, only 10 survived the tragic crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431.